From the early space flights, we demonstrated a potential to carry out this type of a mission. And again, it was a question of time until this would be accomplished. Beneath the moon's glimmering surface lies a profound secret. It has remained concealed in the shadows of the universe, an exploration that spans decades of mystery, unveiling hidden truths that will ignite your imagination and send shockwaves through the scientific community. Aldrin's tears become a symbol of truth, one so overwhelming that even a seasoned astronaut cannot contain the weight of its significance. But what exactly is this truth? And what did Buzz Aldrin encounter during his missions into outer space that has forever altered his perception of the moon? Join us in decoding the tears, the words, and the staggering revelations behind the untold story of how the moon might not what you think it is. The name Buzz Aldrin carries echoes of adventure, courage, and remarkable human accomplishments. When the Apollo 11 mission comes to mind, one can't help but conjure images of that monumental journey and his indelible role within it. This man, a lunar explorer, became the living embodiment of humanity's unyielding desire to transcend the confines of our world. His impact was profound, bringing to the Apollo 11 endeavor a seamless fusion of intellectual brilliance and military precision. Whenever NASA sought expertise, Aldrin was their undisputed go-to source, a cornerstone of knowledge and skill. He also etched his mark as a valiant fighter pilot, soaring through the skies in daring combat missions during the Korean War. This man's journey wasn't merely bound to the pages of academia, but etched into the skies and stars above. Within the confines of Apollo 11's command module, Aldrin assumed the mantle of lunar module pilot. While this designation may seem limited in scope, its magnitude is beyond measure. He was the guiding force in the endeavor that allowed humans to set foot on the moon for the first time, proof of his brilliance and the impact of his role. It was his duty to oversee the intricate systems of the lunar module, which bore the fitting name Eagle. His responsibility encompassed coordinating its descent onto the moon's surface and managing its ascent to rendezvous with the command module. Every switch, each indicator light, and all streams of data fell under his watchful gaze. His role served as the linchpin, the crucial link between the triumph of the mission and the looming specter of disaster. Then arrived that very instant which still captures our collective breaths. Even years later, the descent to the moon unfurled like a heart-pounding saga. As the eagle gracefully parted from the command module, Aldrin took the helm, his hands guiding and his intellect sharp. After Neil Armstrong's iconic proclamation of one small step, Buzz Aldrin was next in line. With deliberate steps, he followed Armstrong, etching his presence in history as the second human to grace the lunar expanse. As Aldrin descended the ladder and finally made contact with the moon's surface, he found himself in awe of the vista before him. His poetic soul couldn't help but paint the scene as a magnificent desolation, a paradoxical harmony of beauty and emptiness. In those moments, Aldrin's words carried the weight of his journey and the profound transformation of a once unreachable realm into a reality beneath his feet. The lunar landscape, an alien canvas untouched by human footsteps until now, held an ethereal allure that captured his imagination. But among this otherworldly splendor, the moon remained a stark and barren place, devoid of Earth's familiar life and colors. Aldrin, a mere explorer, transformed into a lunar scientist, he orchestrated experiments, leaving his mark on the moon's powdery surface. And then there was the American flag, staked into the lunar soil, a symbol of achievement and unity, fluttering against the blackness of space. Yet, beneath the apparence of scientific difficulties, Aldrin found a moment of reflection. He paused, connecting with something larger than himself. In the vast stillness of the lunar environment, he engaged in a symbolic act of communion, a gesture that transcended religion a spiritual whisper exchanged between man and the universe. It's essential to remember that he was not just a scientist, but also a humanist. On the moon, he became a harmonious blend of these roles, weaving together the threads of technical exploration with the deep resonance of human experience. In those singular moments, Aldrin's legacy extended beyond his technical achievements, encapsulating the intricate interplay between humanity's thirst for knowledge and its eternal yearning to touch the sublime. His encounters with the moon went beyond mere walking and working. They ventured into playful interactions that unveiled the moon's unique character. 
With a spirited sense of childlike excitement, he revealed the moon's altered gravity by hopping and skipping across its surface. These buoyant movements were a demonstration and a celebration of the lunar environment itself. The spectacle was witnessed by a captivated audience of millions back on Earth. His movements, a dance of moonlit joy, were captured in vivid detail. Among the memorable snapshots, there's the now famous image of his boot imprint etched into the moon's soil, a proof of the subtle effects of pressure in this distant land. And then, there's the extraordinary picture he took, an iconic moment that would later be recognized as one of the earliest space images. But it wasn't just the lighthearted moments that etched Aldrin's name into history. He became part of an immortal scene, an image that spoke of human achievement and national pride. In a photograph framed by the limitless expanse of space, Aldrin stood beside the American flag, saluting with unwavering determination. The shade of his helmet mirrored his reflection and the image of Armstrong, who took that giant first step onto the moon's surface. His legacy was cemented not only through images but also through words. On a momentous phone call, the voice of President Richard Nixon rang out across the emptiness of space, congratulating Aldrin and Armstrong on their triumphant feat. With resounding conviction, Nixon hailed them as the two most famous individuals in all of history, proclaiming their lunar mission as a colossal stride for humanity. As the moon's spell began to loosen, Aldrin re-entered the lunar module after Armstrong, the sense of adventure still coursing through his veins. With a deliberate flick of a switch, an electric current surged forth, igniting the ascent engine. A burst of power lifted them from the moon's tranquil surface, setting them on a trajectory back toward the stars. The lunar module, a vessel of dreams, eventually found its way to the orbiting embrace of the command module Columbia, piloted by Michael Collins, a reunion that symbolized unity amidst the cosmos. Buzz Aldrin's contributions to the Apollo 11 mission went beyond technical expertise. They were monumental and infused with a unique spirit. Amidst the marvels of space, Aldrin encountered an unexpected adversary, space sickness. This marked the first instance of a human falling victim to this ailment in the vast expanse beyond our planet. Picture this. As the Apollo 11 spacecraft soared towards the moon, Aldrin grappled with a peculiar sensation, the disorienting conflict between his inner ear and his eyes. This battle of perceptions arising from weightlessness led to a condition we know as space sickness. It's similar to motion sickness, but far more enigmatic, resulting from the body's struggle to comprehend its orientation and movement in a gravity-defying domain. Like an unwelcome guest, space sickness brought its troop of symptoms. Waves of nausea, unrelenting dizziness, a persistent headache, and a weariness that seeped into every fiber of Aldrin's being. Even his appetite seemed to vanish amidst the cosmic turmoil. Astonishingly, the whispers of Aldrin's struggle remained veiled, buried under NASA's desire to focus on the brighter facets of the mission, shielding it from any negative spotlight. However, time unveiled the hidden chapters of Aldrin's journey. In his autobiography, he disclosed the clandestine battle with space sickness, shedding light on the vulnerability he, a seasoned astronaut, endured. Interviews and documentaries became his medium to narrate the story that lay beyond the triumphant veneer as he shared his experience with candor. Aldrin's intentions were twofold. To serve as a guiding light for future spacefarers, arming them with knowledge to prevent this global enemy and to portray him as an exemplar of humanity's shared vulnerabilities. His revelation was proof of his resolute spirit, echoing that we remain tied to our human nature even among the stars. In a domain that often exudes the mood of invincibility, Aldrin's honesty reminded us that weakness is the cornerstone of our shared human narrative. On the mission's third day, a twist of fate befell Buzz Aldrin as he delved into the cosmic unknown. Among his intricate dance of operation and experiments within the command module Columbia, a peculiar ailment named space sickness came knocking on his astronaut's soul. A pivotal moment in his cosmic journey was the testing of a sextant a celestial navigation marvel that measured the divine angles between stars, plotting the craft's precise position and speed in the dark void. In proof of human curiosity, Aldrin explored the secret of zero gravity with a floating pen and a humble sheet of paper. He reached out to the Symphony of Mission Control and his fellow celestial companions, Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins, with the unadorned tale of his cosmic discomfort. Buzz Aldrin, however, was no ordinary spacefarer. 
With determination rivaling a comet's trajectory, he combated this sickness by ingesting a mixture of medication, embracing moments of respite, and escaping sudden revolution. The sustenance of water and crackers became his allies, each taste aimed at soothing the celestial tempest within. Although his stomach held steadfast, waves of nausea and discomfort rumbled through his body for a brief two-day journey. His ailment's haunt casts doubt upon his excellent performance, threatening to cast a huge shadow upon the hallowed mission. But the concern wasn't merely confined to the universe. It danced along the tightrope of public perception as Aldrin grappled with the fear of tarnishing his identity as both an astronaut and a dignitary. In this model of the universe, Buzz Aldrin's journey became more than a mission. It transformed into a global dance of success over the body's earthly limitations, all while the eyes of the world twinkled with anticipation, waiting to see the celestial hero's every move. Let's plunge right into the heart of Aldrin's intriguing suggestion. He suggested that these odd formations might not just be coincidental, but could instead hint at hidden depths, an obscured outpost, a relic from a forgotten civilization, or even something not of this world. Now. Picture the far side of the moon, often called the dark side. This enigmatic realm remains mostly untouched, always turned away from Earth due to the moon's rhythmic dance with our planet, a space shrouded in an air of mystery where the unknown could be masterfully concealed and where our understanding is held back, leaving an open canvas for extraordinary possibilities. Aldrin's idea taps into this sense of wonder, stirring our imagination and igniting a spark for exploration. People have become lunar detectives, meticulously scouring images for hints of engineered constructs. Some claim to have glimpsed towers, suspended bridges, and even complex structures. While some of these discoveries might be the mind's tendency to recognize patterns in randomness, the fact that a seasoned astronaut like Aldrin lends credence to these notions adds a gravity that can't be brushed aside. Interestingly, Aldrin's passion for this concept extends beyond mere speculation. He actively urges for renewed lunar exploration, with a keen eye on the far side. His intent goes beyond satisfying curiosity. He aims to unlock knowledge that could potentially reshape our comprehension of the universe. The idea isn't just about uncovering ancient secrets or extraterrestrial installations. It's about unearthing wisdom that might revolutionize our technology, uncover forgotten histories, and offer us an entirely new perspective on our cosmic existence. This idea sets the minds of both the young and the old ablaze with wonder, taking us back to the days of brave explorers and daring treasure hunters. Back then, maps were adorned with warnings like, here be dragons, and the allure of the unknown was a melody luring the bold and the brave. In the grand saga of the space age, Aldrin's idea aligns perfectly with humanity's relentless thirst for exploring new horizons. If concealed structures are on the moon, they stand as a challenge that's impossible to resist. Who constructed them? How many years have they stood there, silent witnesses to the passing of time? These questions are like golden keys that might unlock the doors of modern exploration, a quest that pulses with excitement and thrill. Aldrin's call for investigation and exploration is more than just words. It's a battle cry for curiosity, adventure, and the unquenchable thirst for knowledge. It's a rallying flag for those who steadfastly reject the notion that we've already uncovered every secret our universe holds. It's a flicker that ignites the flames of imagination within scientists, daring explorers, and visionary dreamers alike. It's a reminder that the canvas of our understanding is still incomplete, and there are countless stars left to chart in the hanging of our universe. But among the constellation of tales that weave mystery and astonishment from the cosmos beyond, there's one account that stands as a beacon of imagination, Aldrin's remarkable recollection of an enigmatic encounter during the monumental Apollo 11 mission to the moon in the midst of July 1969. This was a time when the world's gaze was fixated on the daring exploits of Apollo 11. Within the capsule soared Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin, a trio embodying humanity's audacious ambition to touch the lunar surface for the very first time. In the sheath of their command module, as the vast expanse of space stretched out before them, Aldrin's eyes fell upon an apparition that would set minds afire with debate, sow the seeds of countless theories, and stoke the eternal flames of cosmic curiosity. As Aldrin cast his gaze through the window, a sight out of the ordinary met his eyes, a curious object drifting alongside their vessel. 
Mind you, this wasn't just a fleeting glimpse. This was a tangible presence, a real entity existing within their midst. It was no satellite fragment or discarded space junk. Its movements appeared orchestrated as if it danced under a deliberate, guiding hand rather than the aimless twirl of happenstance. But what lent this sighting its allure wasn't merely this astral enigma's existence, but the observer's very caliber. Aldrin wasn't a casual bystander making an offhand claim. He was an astronaut, a denizen of the scientific realm, trained in the precision of observation and meticulous reporting. This man had been forged in the crucible of countless hours spent in training simulations and unyielding tests, all to ensure his readiness to document each facet of this mission's unfolding. Now, imagine the scenario. Thousands of miles distant from Earth, engulfed in the velvety abyss of deep space, and face to face with the unexplained, mere inches from the windowpane. Any rational being's first question would echo in the confines of their thoughts. What on this earth, or beyond it, is this apparition? This, undoubtedly, is the query that raced through Aldrin and his fellow astronauts' minds. To further tangle the narrative, the brave explorers of Apollo 11 hesitated before broadcasting this curious observation to their earthly overseers. Initially, they chose a different tack, covertly inquiring about the whereabouts of the Saturn V rocket stage they had previously jettisoned. Their intent was to establish whether the drifting entity Aldrin witnessed could be attributed to this discarded component. The response surely debunked this theory, confirming the stage's 6,000-mile distance. Yet, still, the conjectures swirled like cosmic dust. Aldrin's encounter serves as a tantalizing reminder of the countless enigmas lurking in these immense distances, awaiting discovery. The entity that Aldrin caught sight of set off a cascade of inquiries, propelling curious minds to delve deeper into cosmic curiosities. It ignited fires of inquisition about the universe and our role within its huge hanging. Its influence reached far and wide, not only beckoning veteran scientists, but also beckoning armchair stargazers to keep their gaze aloft, their thoughts unhindered by boundaries, and their hearts open to the infinite prospects that space unfolds. In the epic saga of space exploration, Apollo 11 stands unshakably as a pinnacle of human achievement, proof of our capabilities. Yet this unexpected, unexplained twist douses the tale with a sprinkle of enchantment. And just wait until you're privy to Aldrin's other pronouncements about the cosmos, claims that speak to the unity of life beyond our blue sphere. His words resonate, echoing the idea that Earth's status as an exclusive cosmic anomaly pales in comparison to the grandeur of the universe. Contemplate the mind-boggling expanse, countless galaxies, each a haven for billions of stars, each star potentially accompanied by an entourage of planets, each planet a realm of unknown possibilities. Aldrin fervently underlines this sentiment, thrusting into the spotlight a question that shrinks our terrestrial concerns. How can we, huddled in a minuscule corner of the Milky Way, presume to be solitary thinkers in the cosmos? Aldrin is no stranger to audacity. He and Neil Armstrong etched humanity's first mark on alien soil long before the concept of extraterrestrial neighbors danced through most minds. This proximity to the uncharted lends weight to his convictions. For if humans have tread upon our moon, why would other entities not gaze upon their own moons and stars, pondering the boundless potential just as we do? The curtains of Aldrin's words and experiences sow a vivid patchwork, an intricate ode to the riddles and wonderments that space holds, awaiting explorers brave enough to thread through its mysteries. With an unquenchable enthusiasm for exploring the depths of space and an unshakable dedication to delving into the mysteries of the universe, his passion for cosmic discovery is unmistakable. He has immersed himself in the alien, the otherworldly, and the cosmic unknown, emerging from this cosmic immersion with a resolute belief that resonates through the very fabric of space and time. If our Earth were but a solitary droplet in this vast expanse, it would be irrational to presume that life was confined solely to that lone droplet. The universe's marvels are truly beyond our grasp, yet each day our diligent scientists and stargazers shatter the limits of our comprehension. New worlds beyond our solar system are being unveiled at a breathtaking pace, many of them nestled within the Goldilocks zone, that enchanting realm around a star where the conditions might be apt for life to flourish. And if this idea fails to ignite your imagination, ponder this. These planets we have uncovered are merely a fraction of what remains undiscovered and potentially abound with life. 
Aldrin's assertions present us with an implicit yet compelling challenge. He urges humanity to press on in our cosmic journey. His belief in the existence of life beyond our world is not just an idea, it's a rallying cry for perpetual exploration. It beckons us towards a time where traveling between the stars is more than mere science fiction, but a tangible and possible reality. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.